I believe that people like Buddha and Jesus live their lives so freely. I have always wondered how I can live like them. I want to live that way and I am curious how I should do it. If they had lived comfortably and freely in those days, their names would not have lasted for two to three thousand years. Because their actions stood out despite tremendous agony and difficulties, their names have not disappeared for two to three thousand years. For our names to remain in the world for a long time, you have to create a certain work with blood, sweat, and tears, and then it will remain a legacy for a long time. The same goes for the name. People who have lived a comfortable life will die without leaving their names. The names of people who overcame a difficult and agonizing life will remain for a long time. We have to correct our common knowledge in the right way. So, after the war, we Hongigingans were born in this land in an era of great chaos, where the international community had become a sea of blood and fire. The Hongigingans were like the seeds thrown into the ruins with great sacrifice, and now they have become adults. We were supposed to grow up in such incredibly difficult circumstances. But if you think that you grew up not experiencing difficulties, it is probably because you are an intellectual or a person who received support from the people, or you grew and studied in a very supportive environment where you didn't have any hardships. We didn't grow up with hardship because we were raised by energies gathered in various forms. We grew up as such. If you had to study hard without any support, you would have done it with tremendous agony. Like these kinds of people. His fundamental growth was supported by the people, but he continued to study afterward, so he was one of the people who studied through hardships even after coming to America. These are the people who have grown without other people's support. These people have become very competent people. However, they have nowhere to use their abilities now. That's the dilemma. Can you become famous without any effort? It can never happen. He took the right path even in the midst of great hardship. Even if Jesus couldn't do the right thing, the traces of his efforts to go the right way left a legacy for two to three thousand years. It was a very difficult society at the time when Jesus lived. The gap between the rich and the poor was great. The rich had too many gold and silver treasures, so they even threw the gold coins. The poor lived a life harder than the slaves. With Jesus' abilities, he could have lived a comfortable life if he compromised with the powerful. There were many offers that he could have accepted from the dominant class in the name of ruling the world. Refusing all of these temptations and working hard and tirelessly for those lost sheep, he was not afraid to choose death. He had been active for only three years in the name of Jesus. He tried to live such a life but died trying. 
he achieved nothing. We have to see correctly what Jesus accomplished. What should we see? The people whom he took in as his disciples when he first came out to society were illiterate fishermen and uneducated laborers, ignorant people who were looked down upon, and those who didn't believe in or follow God. People who had no idea about any ideology at all. He chose these people as his 12 disciples. Jesus himself didn't know why he chose them. He went where his feet led him. That was from his spiritual power. He didn't educate these 12 disciples very well, and he didn't preach in a nice place for his disciples to observe well what he was doing. But he taught everyone what he knew about how to live and his understanding about God in a manner they could all understand well. He taught even the uneducated to understand well, little by little. Like this, he was active, traveling the society for three years. He taught disciples at the table after eating dinner in the evening. He taught them gently for three years until he faced death under a great pressure. Even Jesus didn't know that his life would end in such a way. However, when he faced this pressure, he didn't avoid it and thought, this is heaven's will. How hard was it for Jesus? When he faced tremendous agony, he knelt and said to God, My God, why hast thou forsaken me? This one saying holds tremendous significance. How great was the suffering for him to say, I believed in the Lord, I followed and acted according to your will, but Lord, why do you forsake me? This one saying contains a powerful meaning. Yet he said to God, I will entrust in the Lord's will. Then he went on to receive the punishment. Did he live and die comfortably? What happened when he said, My God, why hast thou forsaken me? He was sweating with blood. When a person is under extreme anxiety, fine veins burst because of the pressure. When small veins burst, your sweat is mixed with blood. A person who has not experienced a world of asceticism, meditation, or spirituality cannot understand it. I have studied them all, and so I know it all now. If you have practiced correctly, or if you have completed your practice, you would have met all the great prophets of the past. You meet all the souls of prophets and discuss it all with them. You have to pass that by conversing with them, and then today's study will begin one by one. I am the last practitioner of humanity who came out into the world now. I can say with confidence the phrase, I am the last ascetic of humanity, means that the path of all training is over. When the last ascetic of humanity comes out, he has to give out all the answers to the world. So I said, ask me anything in the universe. I am still not famous. I have nothing, not even a house. 
All our brothers have formed their organizations, their logic, and their ideology to create all the power. I have been studying on my knees as a beggar in the mountains for 17 years. I have never eaten a good meal while picking up trash. I had to eat icy food in the winter. I studied by myself because I lacked something. I entered the mountain from God's calling. I didn't speak with anyone, nor did I change my clothes once during the 17 years while studying in the mountain. I began with the study of myself, then moved on to studying heaven, nature, and everything that happened since the creation of heaven and earth. I can say with confidence that no one who has this amount of knowledge in the world will ever come in the future. I know that you all are intelligent, but ask me. I know you are smart, but ask me what you can't solve with your knowledge. That is why I say, ask me anything under the heaven and earth. All the gods can also ask me. Whatever you ask, I will answer. That's what I mean when I say, ask me anything in the universe. Not only can people ask, but the gods can ask. Gods also play their roles as gods who are obsessed. A heavenly deity has not appeared in the world yet.